right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel. If this is your first time here and you're interested in things related to Norse heathenry, uh, Germanic paganism, what is modernly called also true quite often, um, anything along those lines, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification so that way you don't miss anything whenever I do upload new content. Usually it's on a once a week type basis, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is going to be me kind of talking about my own views or my own thing uh, of, of with regards to um, preparing for ritual, preparing for uh, the action of interacting with <clears throat> the sacred. Okay, so big UPG warning before we even get started. Um, nothing about what I have to say um, should be considered as, you know, the way things have been done, I, I wouldn't even be the one to, to say that this is, you know, the, the way our pagan ancestors would have done things. Um, maybe some of the stuff that I've come up with my own self um, has some uh, pieces that I've taken from historical side uh, of things, but it's definitely not to be misconstrued in any way as being, you know, part of the larger heathenry in general. This is just my take on it. This is how I do it. Um, or, or various ways of how I do it and how you do it, what you do, what you hear about others doing, um, it, it's going to vary. So that being said, um, I have done a video <clears throat> already about just kind of the basics of uh, constructing a uh, just a basic ritual, okay? You know, some of the things that you would have present with you, the items, um, Kind of the how-to of it a little bit just kind of gives you a rough draft um, or a rough blueprint of where to begin because I know a lot of folks that um, especially new heathens that start out <clears throat> get into wanting to you know perform ritual and and, and maybe give bloat to, to the gods and things that we hear about uh, from our historical sources and from the lore and from the sagas and things like that and we want to engage in that sort of activity and we want to do those sorts of things and you know especially the newer heathens uh, really don't know a bunch about where to start or where to go and it can be a little bit intimidating I think for especially the newer heathens uh, specifically it can be a bit intimidating uh, starting out maybe you just think it has to be done a certain way it has to be perfect it has to be the right way every single time all the time um, and it doesn't you know everybody like um, <laughs> you, you if you've been a heathen for any length of time I'm sure that you've experienced um, ritual or you've been in ritual with other heathens um, or you've done things maybe your own self and your own solo you know practitioner type things um, where uh, you mispronounce the word or you stumbled over a word or you missed a spot of doing something you skipped a step um, <clears throat> there maybe just seemed a little bit of a you know not quite as a, a good flow to it things are gonna happen it, it happens you know what I mean so I don't think we should get too hung up on the you know, follow step A through Z uh, of things so much as we should be focusing on the intent and the the spirit behind it, if you will. Why are we doing what we're doing? What is the purpose behind what we're doing? And is what we are doing sincere and in its true, uh, you know, level of, of the giving nature, the gifting cycle, exchanging in Gabo. Okay, so... I've already linked the video uh, of where I talked about the basics of a heathen ritual or just kind of how to do it um, just to kind of get you started. But what I wanted to talk about today was the essence of getting into ritual state of mind or the idea of getting into a ritual state of mind and, and or state of mind. And what some people might be wondering is, well, why do you have to be in a certain state of mind? Why can't you just decide you're going to go do ritual, go out there and do it um, and be done with it? <clears throat> and to that, I would say uh, you certainly could. Um, you could certainly go out and, you know, take a, a, a job interview um, for the job that you want and um, just kind of go in there and just do it. Or you could prepare for it. You could study for what you need to know. You could go in there looking your best, um, appearing your best, being in the, the sharpest state of mind, being ready to engage with the other person who's giving you that job interview. So that way you give the best performance, you give the best that you absolutely can give. Um, in the same light, you could you know, have a test coming up for your school or studies or, or whatever, and you could not prepare 
in advance for it, you could not study, and then you could go in and do it, and you could probably do fairly well, or maybe even ace it, <clears throat> but the essence of it's not going to be as sincere, there's not going to be the satisfaction of finishing afterwards and completing it afterwards, you're not going to receive that same level of satisfaction as you would have if you were to prepare uh, for that. So in that similar state of mind, in that, in that similar approach, the way I feel is that we are going to approach um, when, it come to, when it comes to ritual and when it comes to doing things like that, we as, as pagans are stepping towards and into realms of the sacred. We are uh, living in and existing in uh, the profane level uh, of, of existence. You know, we have mortality, of course, so, so do the gods, but our, our, our plane of existence is in the profane. So when we go to do ritual, when we go to bloat, when we go to stumble, whatever our ritual is that we're doing, we are entering into part, we are, we are trying to engage with the sacred. We are trying to experience their essence and, and, and exchange those gifts with them for those moments. Um, so getting into a ritual state of mind, uh, what I mean is, is preparing oneself, okay? Um, dressing the part can quite often help with getting into a certain state of mind. Um, if you watch my videos for any length of time, you see that I usually look a certain way. Um, I have a, you know, faux bear shawl that I wear, <laughs> a fair burr, <laughs> a bear fur. See, skipping over my words, it happens. It happens. Um, a fake or faux bear fur shawl that I wear it just kind of gets me into a state of mind. I have, you know, these, you know, uh, these le leather arm uh, bracers things that I wear. It's a, an appearance, it's a th thing. It gets me into the state of mind. Um, for doing these videos. So, <clears throat> for ritual, uh, you, you may see a lot of folks that get into ritual garb. They will wear tunics, they will wear certain things. This helps them enter into the ritual state of mind. Another thing that um, myself and some other folks may do is um, partake of and use aids, um, external aids, to kind of get us into an altered state of mind, get us into a state of mind that is not the same state of mind that we're in every single day. You may hear of people using um, um, herbs, uh, alcohol, uh, other hallucinogenic type things to help get them, without abusing those substances, just help get them into a heightened or altered state of awareness. Um, and this can help in us reaching uh, a point of in exchanging uh, the, the relationship between the profane and the sacred or the divine uh, realms. And uh, this, this practice, the, that of using exterior or external um, hallucinogens, aids, uh, things of that nature, is not an uncommon thing to hear in many cultures throughout the world uh, when it comes to their shamanic, any sort of divination, um, you know, magical work, ritualistic work. It's not uncommon to hear about those things in not just Germanic pagan culture, but in other cultures. Uh, in and throughout the world, so um, <clears throat> I do, you know, that um, a lot of times if I'm wanting to work something specific uh, where I want to really tap into certain things, um, I will, you know, get help from external aids to, to get into that uh, ritual state of mind and communicate to the sacred and, and feel their presence and that sort of thing. Is it necessary? Is it absolutely necessary? No, I don't feel that it is because there are um, plenty of individuals who may even watch this video who don't require external aids to get into that ritual state of mind. They can get into a trance state and travel the realms um, and experience things in an out-of-body sort of way that transcend what those hallucinogens and those types of other uh, physical aids can induce. And uh, it's, fen it's phenomenal and, and there are people that um, are trained in, in that sort of uh, what's called a sather, the, the, the Norse mysticism, and um, I myself am not, um, but it is fascinating. So it can happen and you can do that and that will help get you into that ritual state of mind. You know, so I'm wanting to talk about this right now because as we are in, uh, for a lot of folks now, the uh, Yule season, you know, we are <clears throat> past the point of the winter solstice, you know, so our days here in the northern hemisphere will now begin to get longer each day. The sun, sol, sona, whatever name you want to put to her, is returning. Her light and warmth 
is coming back. Matter of fact, today here in Tennessee, um, she came back full at full force. It was uh, about 70 degrees today, but that's just Tennessee for you. I think I think this part of the of Midgard, I think Seoul is a bit bipolar at times, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so with that being said, um, we are in that festival time of year where there's a lot of you know gifting um, between tribes and tribe members and. Um, we, myself, uh, my, my wife and I and, and some close friends of ours, we will be doing our Yule uh, festivi festival or festivities, celebrations here in a few weeks after this, uh, after the year ends, we will be doing ours in the first part of the year. But, um, so there's ritual that gets performed during those major feasts, those major celebrations, Yule being one of the biggest ones uh, for Germanic pagans to celebrate. Um, and I wanted to talk about you know, ritual state of mind because as we look to engage with the sacred and as we look to receive the gifts that they want to give us and as we give to them and as we exchange in that gifting cycle, um, it's important to realize that it's not just us and them on the same plane. We are having to engage with them in, you know, their sacred space and, and they come to us in our sacred space and there's this, you know, symbiotic relationship and, and we that we are existing together at the same time, but we have to get into that state of mind because they are. You know, even the gods, um, as, as in our, the way I see it anyway, is that even though they have their faults, even though they are fallible, even though they have their things that they do that we can learn from, uh, they are sacred and um, they are not our equals. So we look to engage with them in their realm um, by getting into that headspace, getting into that frame of mind to communicate with them and, and to experience those sorts of things. So um, I kind of shared a little bit with you guys, you know, just my idea about it. I told you from the beginning, big UPG type type of thing, that this is my view. And I'm curious to hear what your view is. So down in the comment section, um, whatever you would like to share with regards to how or if you um, have a specific thing that gets you into that ritual state of mind, um, whatever you want to call it, feel free to leave those. Uh, notes down in the comment section. I'm excited to read what you have to post and I'm sure everybody else that watches these videos would love to to see it as well. Thank you all so much for supporting Midgard Musings. Be sure to check the description down below for a link that takes you to other links. Um, Patreon is one of them. Teespring, Redbubble for um, Midgard Musings merchandise. Uh, donations via PayPal. All that type of stuff is going to be a link down in the description. Please click that link and follow it. If anything that you want to do to help support Midgard Musings um, if you see anything there that fits you, that's definitely appreciated. So thank you all again for watching today's video. Hail, and I'll see you next time.